Hello everyone, just trying to get a quick video out today. Um, apologies for being MIA, but I was taking a little bit of a break ever since I finished the sampling series and uh, I've been just very busy with uh, real life stuff. So, um, today's video will just be a little quick, um, basically update saying I'm alive. Uh, and also, uh, people were asking me what stuff I buy daily from a gem shop and then just regular shops <clears throat> and then what things I prioritize in the gem shop. So figured I would go over that quickly. We'll start with daily buys in game. So daily, remember to always claim your boss keys and colo tickets. They are quite nice. Um, you have three days to do it. So, you know, just make sure you don't over go over on them. Uh, next up we have, um, let's grab my money. We have uh, shop one. Uh, I like buying hot dogs, but again, these are all kind of optional. These are like really marginal benefits that you get out of them, but I generally do it just out of force of habit. Um, I'll buy definitely the small mana pots, hot dogs, um, and uh, I like buying the green pots. I actually buy all four potions, but you the only ones I actually really recommend are small mana pot and green pot. So. If you're going to be doing the daily picnic quest, crude oil is a must, along with the sculpting tools. Um, I'll be honest, I'm particularly lazy, and I don't like doing that. And if you don't have a gigantic stack of the teleports, uh, go ahead and buy those as well. Uh, same thing with talent resets. If you're farming crystals, you're going to be getting a lot of talent resets, though. As you can see, I just have a ton. So I generally don't need to buy those anymore, but it just depends on where your account is. Shop 2, same thing, hot dogs, great thing to buy. Uh, the reason why you buy hot dogs is because they are essential to making um, golden peanuts. Golden peanuts are good for uh, mining. Uh, I used to buy small XP potions back in the day. Uh, I don't actually think you need to anymore. <clears throat> um, you can just because, but like, yeah, it's not really necessary. You want to get your dude eye for the day good source of candy. Uh, Capital's case is also good if you want to make a couple biggie eyes. Uh, this one I recommend a little less in the case you have, uh, or unless you have a um, giant stockpile of the uh, woodular circles. So again, just a way to turn resources in game into more candy. And you basically turn all candy into shroom kills nowadays. So um, again, Model Town teleports and these, you just buy them if you need them. Uh, shop 3, <clears throat> if you're looking to try to green stack the golden doubloons, be my guest. They are a buyable that you can do that with. It would take a little while, though, so good luck. Um, I used to buy the uh, small, or the small, average potions of strength and speed, but you don't need them nowadays. Uh, and again, it's just the same thing with those, so nothing really special there. This one I don't even really touch. And for shop four or sh world three shop, uh, you used to buy like the stones every day, but again, don't really need them with the world four being a thing. So, so those are really the shop stuff. Um, buying every day is kind of outdated just because they've all gotten power crept. So, for shop or world four shop, the <clears throat> the two foods you can buy and green stack them. I have a green stack of the ribs right now. I should probably just buy the, um, the what should I call it, uh, cupcakes. But I've been lazy and I didn't want to lose a uh, potential bank slot. But I, it's an easy green stack and I could just put it somewhere um, for the free green stack because why not? So I'll probably end up doing that. It only takes like a day or two to green stack it anyway, right? It's a hundred. Thousand six million. Yeah, it takes two days to green stack it. So, really easy, really cheap. Um, the world four stones. I actually think you get tons of weapon upgraded stones. You get way more than you'll could reasonably ever use. But I'm constantly running out of armor stones or tool upgrade stones. If you are resetting uh, post office six with pens every day, uh, you'll actually get a lot of them too. But you can also just buy them from the shop. Uh, and then again, green stacking these potions is kind of nice because they're all, all the potions are fairly usable. I mean, except the mana pots, but you'll green stack those anyway, just because crystals. Uh, 
But all four of these potions have their uses every now and again. The damaging potion is incredibly strong. The speed potion is also incredibly strong. The HP potion comes in handy when you're uh, doing mining samples. And the XP potion is just a pretty nice little source of XP. So all of them are viable. I would say, you know, all of them have their reason. Um, and then you could buy your bag for the day until all your characters have one. Again, it's fairly cheap once you get World 4 money rolling, so. I have to do two trips of this because I fold up my inventory. But as far as those daily shops go, that is basically my recommendation. Uh, working towards green stacks, as long as you have the income, is, is good to do for these large purchases that you can get from uh from the daily shops because green stacks are good and you need you can't just like make multiple different stacks of like copper for instance that won't count for individual green stacks uh and if you're not in the know the reason why you go for green stacks is for unadulterated banking fury so so yeah working towards those is a good thing to do um you know you you'll you'll want the extra damage any any source of damage is good so and as far as shop items go, it depends where you are in the game. Um, as far as daily consumables go, I wouldn't really consider them unless you've already gotten all the really good permanent upgrades. So we'll just go through them. Um, as far as daily stuff goes, I mean, I was buying weekly chips and weekly jewels. Um, I bought some eggs daily. Uh, uh, that's about as it. That's about as far as I've went with the the daily purchases of of uh, consumables. It's not really something I can afford. <laughs> um, I try to make my jewels or gems stretch as far as I can, <clears throat> even though I am a bit of a whale. So, um, so as far as the priorities I would go with is uh, you definitely want the backpack space, the storage space. And the carry capacity and food slots. These are all really strong and fairly cheap compared to other things. Like, you could farm these up over time. Uh, priorities on it. <clears throat> I value food slots very highly, especially if you're lacking in defense or um, damage. I mean, they're just so versatile. There's so many different uh, stats that you can upgrade with uh, potion or with the food slots. So, uh, the... <clears throat> storage slots are the next most required here. Um, storage slots are just really strong, and they give a ton of storage, so without these, it's pretty painful. Uh, but I'm also kind of a hoarder, so again, it depends on your playstyle. Uh, then I would go with uh, probably carry capacity over backpack space, but honestly, you'll, you're going to want both of them, and they're both around equal in my eyes. I mean, technically, one is more efficient than the other, depending on how many upgrades you have of either. So, depends on your bags and everything, but, you know, it just worked towards both of them, I would say. Um, daily teleports, I really enjoy playing with them. Uh, people who don't have them maxed out, I mean, they get by fine, but I personally like them. Uh, minigame plays, depends on how diligent you're going to be with your minigames. Uh, they are a really strong source of XP, but with Maestro being, or Maestro being a little, um, <clears throat> falling by the wayside in terms of meta because elite classes have come out, uh, they're not as necessary anymore, so, uh, I wouldn't focus on any of these other ones. Uh, you can buy a Pandora reset or swap token whenever you need to, but, like, I wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, card slots, a uh, huge uh, card slots are one of the highest priorities I would go for. They are cards are just some of the most powerful things in the game. And then as far as uh, card presets, I'd say like maybe get like one or two for quality of life. The first couple are like fairly cheap, and then they kind of get expensive. So, <clears throat> and then uh, daily dungeon plays, I would also highly recommend. Uh, they're kind of pricey, but uh, very strong dungeons just gives a lot to your account so there's the usables up and then as far as other bonuses go infinity hammer is insane you, you're gonna want that early on um brimstone forge slots are also really good you, you don't need to max them out i just have over time they're fairly cheap per slot so there's something that you can work towards weekly um with your free gems if you're diligent farming bosses and such so uh the Cauldrons, 
fairly strong uh, early on. Later on, not as much. Basically, I don't get very much use out of this at all. But it just depends where you are in your account. It'll help you unlock bubbles early on when you're uh, doing alchemy, but they're not really required later on. So if you want to suffer a little longer on your alchemy stuff, then you can you could skip this one. It's not the most painful to skip out on. Uh, liquid cauldrons, however, I think are very required early on. Uh, they're a lot less necessary now with bubonic conjure, but they're still very strong for her, their um, price. So, Obel slots, I personally like having this maxed. Obel storage is very limiting. Um, but again, that's getting into the like, the like whale territory because if you have enough obols that you're running out of storage space then you probably need the storage space and it means you've probably bought a lot of obols so it just yeah it depends where you are again uh sigil charge i i maxed it it feels fairly strong it's kind of hard to tell honestly sigils are pretty passive so for world three uh crystal 3d printer is basically the only one required out of here um more sample spaces are good ease of uh, quality of life. Uh, burning bad books, again, quality of life, but this is actually a high value pick. So uh, I wouldn't ever buy prayer slots. I bought one. Kind of regret it. Waste of gems. Zencogs, uh, basically also don't really recommend, honestly. Uh, really, really pricey uh, for something that kind of gets... It, you don't quickly outpace it, and generally they have, like, there depends on the build that you're going for. They'll still have their uses, but overall, it's for how expensive they are, they're definitely a low priority to me. Uh, Cog inventory space, it only becomes relevant later on, or like late game, when you have a full build set and XP set. So, uh, build slots are pretty efficient. Uh, I would recommend them. They're pretty good to get for to go for. So, if you got some event gems lying around, you can grab one or two. Uh, and flags, uh, basically, this one hurts because you you need it so much early on, but then you kind of it becomes like useless later on, and then you completely lose the effect when you've unlocked all the squares. So, again, depends on how much content you're wanting to skip and how much like time forward you're trying to skip. So, flags are incredibly slow without this upgrade, but they you zoom past them with it. So. Uh, for World 4 stuff, uh, the Royal Egg Cap I like a lot. Um, I'm not sure of all the numbers, it just feels fairly strong, and again, it the cost on it doesn't scale up too hard, so. Uh, Richland Kitchens, to be honest, I don't even really recommend buying multiple kitchens. The amount of speed increase you get per every kitchen is fairly minimal. I kind of just did this to see if it would get any better, but realistically, my last kitchen speed compared to my first kitchen speed is like 0.001% of my overall speed, so it's not all that worthwhile to do this. Uh, you really only need like one or two purchases in this, um, and then everything else is kind of a waste of gems, I would say. Um, chips are insane. Um, it's a huge gamble on them, but they're not the most expensive things in the universe, and they are just some of the most crazy buffs that you can get so same thing with jewels i would prioritize jewels over chips but once you have jewels maxed out then chips are a good buy uh soup to the tube i really wouldn't go past three purchases on this um i bought four early on thinking that we would have more people in lab but uh six is like the meta amount to have in lab and you don't really need more slots than that so Pet storage, I have not found a need for this at all. If it ever comes up, it's fairly cheap for it, but I just don't know when it will come up. So, uh, Fancier spaces, to be honest, I don't really recommend this one until maybe shiny pets come out. I, I haven't really seen a, a tremendous use for them since breedability, the first couple levels of breedability, uh, you get really quickly, and then after that, they are so agonizingly slow, agonizingly slow, it doesn't matter how many fence yard slots you have. So, And then daily eggs, I mean, you can buy them if you want to speed up your breeding process, but it's it's up to you. It's up to how many gems you have to spend and all that. So, uh, As far as other purchases go, keychains are pretty strong. They're kind of pricey for what they are, though, um, because the range on 
useless keychains to insane keychains is pretty like high. Uh, I would personally recommend just going to go farm them with Flurbo, even if the price is increased. It's I think still efficient to do so, um, just because it's pretty pricey buying them with gems. Daily candy, I would really only buy the the last one, um, the this one for the 72 hour candy. The 72 hour and tw uh, 24 hour candies are pretty strong. This is like a fairly cost efficient. Um, you can buy out the entire candy shop for not like too much, but that's that's getting into really really big whale territory. Uh, but if you need like a one hour candy for something, I mean, by all means, card packs are pretty strong too. I've purchased a lot of card packs as well. Um, not like a tremendous amount. I, I, it was like a mix of farming them. Uh, there's certain cards that you just basically can't farm. Dungeon cards in particular are incredibly difficult to farm, especially the bosses. Um, the nightmare bosses are pretty much... Uh, uh, for Amorak, you could farm it. I farmed mine up, but it would take a long time of storing keys. Efont as well. Efont's a little bit easier in the sense that you can get a lot of keys from Do. So... Again, it just depends how long you've been playing. As far as the Cheezor card, I basically felt like that was buyable, like a like a buy only. So the individual experiences may vary. So, and then with the World Four card pack, uh, the Chaotic Troll is like a very strong card. So you're gonna want that one as well. So I would spend a couple into the card packs but it just depends oh premium fires are pretty like i honestly this is fairly easy to just farm up with killing a, like bosses and such like that so it's not too bad if you got a couple cards you want a four star i would recommend it just because four starring cards is generally very slow so that would be how i approach gem shop uh, as you see i have a lot of those things maxed um i have purchased quite a few gems um, not gonna lie, but the the bundles are very cost efficient, so highly recommend the bu bundles. Um, and if you're feeling like spurging, you can go for it. Uh, other than that, yeah, that's uh, that's how I approach the shop every day. So hopefully you found this video informative. Uh, this was a uh, me starting on viewer requests, so someone was asking about that, so I wanted to get that out. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll try to get another video out this week, uh, hopefully soon. Have a good one.